Welcome to the woods. It's cold. It's been freezing for about a week. But we're holding up. Things are okay. Even the birds are doing well. In fact, I think they're probably glad they're inside. Now in my last video, I talked about an alternative currency, which is quite a big idea, quite a grand scheme. And that tends to be how I think. I tend to have big ideas. Um, and if I can, I'll usually follow them through. I'll try and put them into action. Building a four bedroom cabin in two and a half acres of woodland with no experience whatsoever. It's quite a big scheme, but it got done. But what I wanted to talk about today was something more ethereal, something that I think in the coming years, if not decades, is going to become important. Not so much about what we do, but how we feel and the type of lives we could or should be living. Because I honestly believe that somewhere along the way we've got lost. We've forgotten what it is to live. And I think we're going to need to rediscover that. I recently posted a statement on um, the Fergans Telegram channel. And I think it was in reply to um, a discussion about AI art. And we'd been laughing on my, my page about how AI couldn't quite get the hands right on anything it tried to do. A lot of six-fingered people around. Fingers protruding out of palms of hands. But I'm sure uh, that's only temporary. But the AI art and the artificial intelligence script writing and chat that is now available publicly for very little money throws up more questions along the same lines as where I think we've gone wrong and what I said on the Fergans channel was that I think in the coming decades, the search for authenticity in every sphere of our lives is going to become paramount. Because it looks like most people I know are living fake lives fake to themselves, fake to the core. And I wondered why it seems that way to me. And there are many different reasons, and I'm sure you'll have your own ideas. But when I speak to people, usually younger, 
than myself. They seem lost. And I had a discussion not long back with a young man who, who said that I was lucky that I was probably the last group that had a roadmap that could be followed. That I could look behind me at my parents and my grandparents and see a plan and move forward in my own life in a, in a very similar manner. That I could get an education, get a job, find a wife, buy a house, have a family, and that all of those things not only followed a tradition that my parents did and my grandparents did, but that was possible. It was a reality. Whereas this young man I was talking to freely admits that he will probably never be in a position to own a home. And that one simple difference throws everything out of kilter. Compounded with the fact that he believes he will never own a home is the difficulty in finding a wife. Now I'm not used to or um, conversant with the dating game today but it seems to be largely done online in a largely unhealthy manner. And I don't profess to understand it completely. But this young man had uh, no problem in finding people of the opposite sex who uh, found him attractive and wanted a date. But no one who really had any idea of future commitment. Everything seemed to be transitory. And I have to ask myself if uh, that's not down to the ever-increasing fact that families are broken. It was rare when I was at school to have a friend or one of the other children whose parents weren't together. I think the opposite is true today. That it would be rare for a child in a class to have parents that were still together. And I wonder what impact that has had where children see that marriage or a family doesn't necessarily last. Maybe that puts them off a commitment. Maybe they can't see a point in that commitment if they've been shown and taught that it doesn't work. And that's quite that's quite daunting to think that if that is what's happened, then how do we change that? How do we teach people that it is worth it? Our society is very much one built on instant gratification. And that may be why so many relationships don't last. Everything is instant. It's uh, right now. From the coffee I'm drinking to the products you order and are delivered 
from the other side of the globe the very next day. I actually looked up this morning <coughs> something I already knew but just wanted to confirm of how did you make coffee before instant coffee? And I remember my parents grinding beans by hand, no battery operated grinder, in a in a grinder to make coffee grounds. And then using a coffee percolator and putting the percolator on the stove. So you had to boil water, put that in the bottom of the percolator, put in the coffee grounds, screw that back into the top half, put the percolator on the hob, heat the water that ran through the coffee grounds, percolated the coffee, and depending how strong you wanted your coffee, you'd leave it five, eight minutes, and then you could pour your cup of coffee. But it wasn't instant it's probably three times longer than pouring hot water onto freeze-dried granules. But it was probably better. As is usually the case, that sometimes these things that took longer were more authentic and therefore better. And I read a small article the other day on Telegram about the first World's Fair in the UK where all of these suppliers were showing off their products and that how that there had been outrage at some of the products on display, how the workmanship was shoddy, how it was a form over function, and a lot of these criticisms were put down to mass production. They weren't handcrafted. They weren't authentic. They were copies made by machines of the day. And I think we're living in a system, society, that is filled with in authenticity where nothing is quite as good as it could be and I think we understand that and I think we understand that things have gone wrong <laughs> but how to put it right Because we can look to our history where things were better in some respects. And I think we need to do that. Someone was saying the other day that as we move forward, the way we live is going to need to be much more family orientated. And I think they're right. I see a lot of young people with no hope of owning a home or of building a family. And maybe those things are tied together. So extended families may very well be the way forward. How things used to be. I've recently thought that 
instead of offering financial assistance to uh, one of my sons in order to assist him in moving forward in the housing market, it may be better for me to build something on the land I already own. And maybe that's a way forward. Whereas he could help me here when I get older. And I could help him out now. With supplying a house or a home. And maybe that's authentic. I see a lot of young people whose only hope of moving forward is waiting for their parents to die in the hope that there's enough in that inheritance that they can then move forward. And I don't think that's a healthy way to live. So I'm unsure how this ramble got from AI art and six-fingered pictures to uh, where we've got to at the moment. But I don't think the way people are living is authentic. I think it's based on false assumptions. They move forward with the idea that comfort and conformity is all that is needed. Unable to see that that comfort can be taken away and that all they'll be left with is conformity. Anyway, you lot, a little bit of a ramble, but something I've been thinking about. Do me a favour, hit like, leave a comment. I'll do my best over the weekend to answer all the comments down below and on the last video as well, which I haven't had a chance to do yet. Speak to you soon, you lot. Oh, more coffee needed.